We're now going to briefly talk about something called Bode's gain phase uh, relation or formula or something like that. Um, and this is a formula that has something to say about what can be achieved with feedback. So it imposes some fundamental limitations on what you can achieve with feedback. And just want to, we're going to see a whole lot more um, about fundamental limitations of feedback in the, the next lecture. Um, but we'll just introduce this one now as sort of set the scene and give a flavor of things to come. So everything we're going to talk about now concerns the standard feedback setup where we have some process and controller all lumped together into our return ratio L of S, and this is in negative feedback. So we have a negative feedback loop with parameter controller and so forth, and we're just interested in trying to understand what is possible to achieve with um, closed loop design. Can we make things arbitrarily good? if we're using control or is in fact are, are in fact there some underlying trade-offs and of course the answer is yes and one such trade-off is um, hinted at at least through this Bode gain phase formula so we'll just and this will become a bit um, clearer next time but we're going to talk about good design or good feedback design what are some good rules of uh, thumb to ensure good closed loop performance. Um, and we'll talk about these much more next time, but some good rules of thumb are high gain for L of S um, for S equal to J omega small. And so what this means is that low frequencies, you typically try to make the size of your loop gain so it's absolute value big and you if you don't have this naturally in the plant you can do it through high gain control by having high gain in your controller at low frequencies you can achieve um, this requirement uh, so th this is typical for good design um, it ensures that your sensitivity function is small and that we'll have a lot more on that uh, in the future um, so this is good for uh, performance and disturbance rejection, that kind of thing. So this is a good rule of thumb for um, controller design. Another good rule of thumb is low gain for L of S for S equal to J omega large. And this is all to do with robustness. So making your process robust to errors in your um, model for the process. Um, and again, we'll have more on that next time. And so we've got these sort of complementary objectives. For low frequencies, we want large gain in LFS, and high frequencies, we want low gain in LFS. And then, of course, we've got to go from one regime to the other. Um, and this. The point where this happens is of a lot of importance, and it's called the crossover frequency. Um, so crossover frequency. And this is um, omega such that the size of L of j omega is equal to 1. So if you like this number here, this is giving you the point at which you're crossing from your region of high gain and good performance to low gain and good robustness. Um, so how might we do this? Well, uh, or visualize what's going on. Um, and this you can do with a Bode plot. So if I just draw on the magnitude part of a Bode plot, here we have lot of logarithmic frequency. And here we have uh, logarithmic gain. It's typically measured in dB. And this, this line here, 0 dB, this is gain equals to 1. Um, so this is the magnitude part of our Bode plot. Um, and then similarly, we have the phase part. 
of um, our plot, and this is giving us the argument of whatever we're plotting, and it's typically the return ratio. So the Bode plot is actually two plots. On the top plot, you plot the size of L of j omega as a function of frequency, and on the bottom plot, you um, plot the argument as a function of frequency. And you typically use logarithmic frequency and gain also logarithmic. And if we want to translate um, these design requirements, well, we have, this is omega c, this is our crossover frequency, maybe I should put a c in here. And then we want high gain for low frequency, so we want L of j omega up here for uh, low frequencies, and we want it way down here. So this is the size of L of j omega. L of j omega. We want it to be very small for low frequencies. And then in between, we want to cross between them. Um, and wherever we cross, this is our omega c. I remember now that pen doesn't work. Um, so what should we do in between? Should we go like that? Or maybe we want a really sharp transition. I mean, this you know, on paper might look rather good because we're able to keep the high gain for a far wider range of frequencies. And as we'll see, this would correspond to us um, achieving good performance and good disturbance reduction for a wider range of frequencies or for a broader class of disturbances. Um, so, oh, yeah. Should we just go for that? We pick the bandwidth we're interested in and then just have, we go maximum L of j omega and then jump, jump down after that and get maximum robustness afterwards. Well, um, this might seem like it's unlikely to work, and indeed it won't work. And one of the explanations for what goes wrong comes through this uh, gain phase formula. And I'll just write down the the um, the formula. And what the formula does is it gives a connection between what the argument of a function L of S is and the magnitude of that function. And it shows that the two are related. And the reason this won't work is that, uh, and we'll see why in a minute, is this period of rapid transition in the magnitude also will necessarily cause a period of rapid transition in the argument as well. And this will have the effect of essentially forcing us to encircle the minus one point and introduce instability. Um, and so what does the Bode gain phase formula says? It says that the, uh, okay, this, I was calling this arg before, this is just another way of denoting it. Um, it says that the argument of L of S, or L, sorry, the argument of L of J omega C, and you have a you have the formula written in uh, your notes in case I write it down incorrectly, which I certainly might do. Um, is given by the integral of zero to infinity, and then we have d. And we differentiate with respect to logarithmic frequency. So everything on our figure is well set up for this. And then here we have L of j omega. Um, and that's multiplied by the log of omega plus omega, let's make that 0, over omega minus omega zero, and then we diff, uh, integrate with respect to log omega. So this whole formula allows us to find the argument of L of j omega at some particular frequency omega zero by performing some integral with respect to omega. So this integral gives us the value of the argument at the frequency omega zero, and we can do this for whatever frequency omega zero we like. Um, but it's interpreting what this formula means that's interesting. And the first thing to say is that there are some caveats. This formula only holds when L of S is the ratio of two polynomials, and also 
when it has no poles in the right half plane and no zeros in the right half plane. So it's a slightly restricted formula, but it nevertheless can provide you some insight into more, yeah, into good control system design. So strictly speaking, this doesn't hold um, when your return ratio doesn't satisfy those properties. But something like it will. It's just not so. It can't be so cleanly. Uh, written down in a formula like this. Um, so what's the right way to think about this? Well, this is the slope. This term here, this is the slope on the Bode magnitude plot. So here we have the size of L of J omega, everything's turned into dBs and differentiating with respect to logarithmic frequency, this is just giving you the slope of whatever your the magnitude part of your Bode plot happens to be. And this is a weighting function. You should think of this like a weighting function. And what does the weighting function look like? Um, so if I just draw that in here, the weighting function, well, it looks like this. If I now plot omega over omega zero, yeah, and if this is the point omega over omega zero, this function here, it looks like a big spike. And it's very centered around the frequency. Omega is equal to omega zero. So this weighting function, it's got a lot of weight at the frequency omega is equal to omega zero, and it's very small everywhere else. And that's what's really important here. Because what that means is that this integral, it's effectively saying that the argument is determined by the size of the slope at any given point. So I have my particular point of interest, and the effect of this integral is to focus this weighting function focuses all its weight around the frequency omega zero, so it's the value of the slope at omega zero that essentially determines the argument at omega zero. And this is why we have a problem, um, because it means that if we have a very negative slope, like we do here, we end up with a very negative um, argument as well. So a plot like that, will necessarily cause us to go and then we go crashing down and maybe this is minus pi minus 2 pi if this is too steep yeah this causes us to have a massive increase in negative argument and what does that mean a massive increase in negative argument it, it just means that as the magnitude of our nyquist diagram goes from high to low our phase becomes very negative, which means we're very likely to encircle minus one point. And so if you try and design your control system to have like amazing high gain, great performance, very large cutoff frequency, and then just crash things off so that we get robustness for frequency ranges where we have a lot of model uncertainty, you'll find that you'll destabilize your system. And in order for your controller to be stabilizing, you have to go for a much more gradual decay and have a, you have a much bigger compromise on um, the, the levels of performance that you can achieve in order to gain good levels of uh, robustness above a certain frequency level. Anyway, we're going to talk a lot more about um, frequency domain design and performance uh, next time. Um, but this is sort of our first taster of one of the fundamental limits in feedback performance uh, given by the Bode uh, gain phase formula.